Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, today we are going to revisit the Asobo Exporter. And we are going to learn how to export our levels of detail. It's uh, quite a bit different than... Um, Blender 2.9, the Blender 2 MSFS uh, add-on that was in Blender 2.9. So we are in the, uh, I mean, we have the Sobo exporter installed in Blender 3.1. So I want to show you uh, how to get that set up. Now, if you do not have the exporter yet you're going to need to download that and you download that by going to their github page and i'm not going to show you how to install it um because i did a video on that previously so you'll need to look at that but this is their github page and the current version, I think when I did my video on this, it was version 1.1.2, and then they are up to 1.1.6. So make sure that you get the most current version, okay? 1.1.6. They also, on their GitHub page, they show you how to install it. So... That's why I'm not really going to take the time to show you. But just make sure that your, your exporter is up to date to 1.1.6. And um, the video I did before, uh, actually that I put out today, really, um, I talked about migrating your, uh, your materials, okay, on Asobo's GitHub page, they explain um, that migration, all right, just so you know. So go to their GitHub page. I think there's a link in the description of, of where to get it. But make sure that your exporter is up to date. Now I need to put this back. All right, so once you get the exporter installed, um, you, if you're using an older mo a model from uh, previous versions of Blender, make sure that you get all your material libs migrated over. And make sure that you work with a copy of your original and not your original, just in case something goes wrong. Uh, get in the habit of doing that any iteration that major iteration that you make to your models You know make a new copy of it that way you have a, a step back if you need to all right, so we need to do a couple of new things in order to do uh, Levels of detail now. I'm not gonna go in and and delete polygons and textures and stuff uh, for this exercise, but normally you would get your your model set up in levels of detail, okay? So you notice that in Blender, I have a collection called Collection, all right? I need to rename this top, uh, this this collection. I need to rename it. And so the levels of details work correctly in the exporter. I want to call this McKinley Air. Now, I already have a, a McKinley Air 2 that actually is what I use in the simulator. But for this, I'm going to call this so I don't overwrite anything that I've already done. I'm going to name this McKinley Air 4. All right. And then I'm going to put an underscore LOD00. Okay. So the collection, if you remember the old exporter that we had previously, 
our collections were x00, x01, and so forth, okay? With the new exporter, your collections need to, you know, be the actual name of the LOD that gets written out. So, McKinley Air 4 underscore LOD 00. Now, what I want to do is I don't have a second LOD, so I'm going to create one real quick. So I'm going to go to Scene, New Collection. I'm going to rename the Collection 2 to McKinley Air 4 underscore LOD 01. Hit enter. All right, so now I have two levels of detail collections, but there's nothing in 01 yet, all right? This would be part of your process of, of creating your LODs for your models. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go up here to McKinley. I don't have to actually click here, but I'm going to hit A to select everything in my model. And I'm going to do a shift D to make a copy of it hit escape so I don't move it and then I'm going to hit with everything selected um, not everything is selected only the copies are selected now so I'm going to hit M and I'm going to move the selected item items to uh, zero one okay so I did that and then I can click outside and not have anything selected. So technically, 00, zero and zero 01 are exact copies of each other. All right. Now for LOD01, we want less detailed to it. So like, for instance, you can go in and, and start deleting objects. You don't want to put in that lower level okay and this is you you would go into this LOD and you'd start messing with your textures you know getting rid of the the uh, polygon counts and vertex counts and and the number of uh, PBR textures that you make calls for all right so you're gonna do that if if you don't remember how to do that, I have a video on creating the different levels of detail. So go back and watch that if you need. All right, so the important part in the new exporter is that your collections need to be in the name of the level of detail that's going to be written out. So I have a McKinley Air 4 underscore LOD 00 and an LOD01, all right? You guys got that? Now, to export this is really simple, all right? First of all, I am going to open up my file editor. I mean, my not my file editor, my uh, Windows Explorer. And you notice that I have a McKinley Air 3 here. All right, I don't really need that. So what I'm going to do is, that was a guinea pig project that I was working on. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. All right, and I have a McKinley Air Blender file, which is what we're working on. All right, so we'll come back to that here in a second. Now, in Blender, we have created two collections with the name of each LOD, right? Okay. And for all intents and purposes, they're exact copies of each other. I didn't minimize other than maybe deleting some cones, right? Okay, now, if you have the exporter installed correctly, you'll have this tab, this multi-export tab over here. All right, so we're going to open that up, and we are going to group by collections and notice how the exporter since you have the naming convention correct 
four levels of detail. That's the name of the object, underscore, and then the LOD level, okay? Since you have your collections correctly named in that format, the exporter will automatically fill in the levels of detail in this in this format right here okay now you want to generate an XML and the XML is going to have McKinley Air 4 period XML okay it's going to get the name of the XML from the main name of the file that you're working on all right then you need to choose the folder that you're going to put it in. And here's the cool thing. Once you get this set up once, when you go back into your model and make updates, you don't have to change the, any of this again. All right. So I am in my uh, MSFS projects uh, scenery folder into the model lib and into the actual model. Okay, that's just where I happen to be. I'm in the right spot. So I'm going to accept that, and it's going to put that path in the folder. All right. Now, I do want to export 00, and I want to export 01. Okay, so I make sure that those are checked marked. Now, if you're doing an update, let's say we've already done this before. All right, and we already have our levels of details written out to our directory or our folder. If you're making an update to the model and you want to do this again, if you have overwrite the GUID, it's going to generate a new uh, identification number, alphanumeric number for that object. All right. If you do that, you have to do a whole bunch of editing or if to the XMLs, or it won't, you'll have to go into your, your scenery XML and make sure that the GUIDs match the object name, okay? The best thing to do is not check that, okay? If you don't check it, you never have to mess with the GUIDs again either, all right? Anyway. I think I digress. Now, remember in the XML, I'll, I'll show you. Um, do I? Will I show you? Hold on. Let me pause and let me find it and I'll show you. Okay. I have an airport, Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, Ohio. And I have the main terminal set up in levels of detail 00, 01, and 02. All right. Three levels of detail. I have an XML called main terminal, and then I have a, a LOD for each one of those, right? Okay. Now, if I right click on the XML and open that with Notepad++, it is going to put um, LOD, the name of the, the LOD, and then the minimum size. All right. Now, by default, it's going to put uh, some number in here. All right. The lowest level is always going to be blank. The medium, I mean, now I entered, I physically entered the 100 and the 50. I went in and, and edited the XML and changed these values. Okay. I had to go into the XML to do it. All right, because by default it puts some other numbers in there, and this was the old version of the exporter. Okay, now what happens with this particular update of the exporter is you take care of the min size value right here okay so for instance if I wanted if I wanted LOD to be 100 I can type in 100 and hit enter and if I wanted 00 
to be 50, I would type in 50. Okay, I'm going to leave it at zero just to show you how that changed. Okay, so that min size, you enter that value right here. All right. Now, once you get that done, it's just a matter of hitting one button and it does the exports. All right, so I am going to pause to set up my Windows Explorer to that folder. Okay, I'm in the folder. All right, there's my McKinley Air folder, McKinley Air 2, but I'm actually using, I've renamed some things to Air 4. All right, so the results of my export are going to be written into this folder. So what I'm going to do is in Blender, I am make sure that I have every, I am generating an XML. I'm creating two levels of detail and zero zero is going to have a min size of 100 and now I'm just going to hit export and it's done that fast all right now let's open up our Windows Explorer and see if they got written okay so right here is the XML that gets written for Air 4 and I have two levels of detail and I have a bin and I have a GLTF for each one of those then so let's go into the XML let's right click edit open in notepad plus plus which is free and notice there's min size there's the 100 that I entered in and then obviously I made the bottom one zero okay but if I would have typed in another value that would have showed up shown up right here and the model file name there's zero zero and there is zero one and there is our GUID right there our I unique identifier for this model okay now if I went in talking about the GUID if I went into the exporter and clicked overwrite GUID and then did it export. Uh, I gotta find it. This number would change. Okay, and if I had added it to my scenery, my scenery XML would have had this number in it and not the new one. So I would have had to go in and update that. So that's there just in case you ever wanted to uh, create a new GUID. Um, that was actually programmed in by them by for me, actually. I made that request <clears throat> because sometimes, sometimes you want to overwrite the GUID and sometimes you don't, okay? The way that the exporter originally was written out, it overrode the GUID every single time you didn't have any control over it so I asked them to make that an option and they did it awesome guys you developers of this export are fantastic so that is creating levels of detail uh, exports using the new Asobo exporter biggest thing to remember other than making sure that you get your materials migrated over is that your collection names are now the full name of the model underscore and then each collection has a different LOD uh, signifier. I hope that makes sense. I hope this helps you in the future. Um, if you have any problems uh you know put them in the comments let let's talk about it if we want to i mean if you want to something like that so i hope this was useful for you today and i will see you guys on the next video have a great weekend see ya